Welcome back to our Honda Build Off presented by Continental Tire. That's right, everybody. At the end of this episode, this build will be a wrap. We are going big starting this episode off with the wheel and tire package on the Civic here. As you can see, we have gone with, or I have gone with a set of Buddy Club P1 racing wheels in a 15 by eight plus 32. And I had to get the white. I just had to match DP. I was like, you know Looks what? Good. Looks good. White, white is just right. So these are a, an excellent wheel in terms of weight. They are uh, 15 pounds, so they're very, very lightweight. I do love the styling of it. It just takes me back to the OG Honda era. And of course, I am running the same Continental Extreme Contact Force tire as Dave is in a 205 50 15. These, if you don't know, are a 200 tread wear track tire, but they're still very, very streetable. They are full tread depth, so they're good in the rain too. So to me, they're like that perfect tire you can take to the racetrack and still drive home on. And they, they have good longevity, which you can't say about other track tires. So uh, let's jump to the back because as you can see, we have not finished our alignment and there is a sad reason why. If you guys watched a previous episode on this car, you will know that I spoke about this problem here. As you can see, someone ran a bunch of JB Weld to close off what was initially cut open to access a nut in the back there that was seized and broken off, which wouldn't allow you to remove this rear toe link. And of course, uh, this side, as you can judge by the rustiness, has not been done and I thought well that just means because it was fixed and guess what people of course it hasn't we, instead of doing what th the previous person did on that side is cut two slits here and then peel this back I think I'm just gonna cut a hole here which to me is gonna be better for rigidity ah, it's burning me is it really it is yeah it's just just getting hot enough to burn the arms a little bit that's funny uh, or I'm just a big suck, you know, I'm sure. Honor. Yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, that was easy. It just goes to show like this metal here is so thin. thin. Wow, yeah. But 
Oh yeah, we do have access to it now. So before I bust out the big torch, I figured I'd give the small oxy torch a try here. And my goal here is to get that metal sleeve heated up to the point where it'll break free inside the nut. I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips in a sec to just hold it and then try to crank the bolt and praying, praying that that'll break it free. All right, you can see that thing was uh, glowing red, which means we certainly have a bunch of heat into here. And I'm coming in with the vice grip. Oh God, she's hot. It's raining hot rubber. Let's see if I can get that on there. Now, here we go. See, now it rotates together as one. It might be working. I think it's working. Yes. It's happening. Oh. Oh. There it is. That is our culprit. It's amazing. Like you'll see, and you'll see the bushing here. I guess I should be able to pull this whole damn thing out now. And that right there. And essentially what I was talking about, if you guys can't envision it, is this gets seized up in here. And you can see, and then it just starts rotating the, the metal sleeve within the rubber bushing, which just screws everything up. So now in here, I don't know if we can even, oh yeah, see this guy, now you guys can see, ooh, that thing's actually quite hot. So this rotate, this moves. I don't know if you guys can see that, but this thing moves and this is how you get your adjustments. So it's in there and I think it's gonna be okay. So of course I'm not gonna be able to reuse this toe link here and I've turned to hard race. Ironically, I had these sitting around. I wasn't gonna use them because I was like, I don't wanna spend the money out of the budget. And this is exactly how budget creep does happen, but I do need them. And really the huge advantage of these, obviously the rubber is gonna be much stiffer than the, the factory stuff, but I now have adjustability in the middle. So this is where I'm gonna be able to make the adjustment and I'm never gonna to have to worry about the rust and cruddy little, uh, you know, slider, slider nut, in, nut in the back yeah. there. So it's gonna be a huge advantage in that sense. And it's just gonna give me a little bit of stiffness. So not all bad, these aren't crazy expensive. It's, it's not a huge deal. But before I put these in, in on this end, I'm coming in with the fluid film black and I'm just gonna blast in here to make sure that this you know, rust problem does not happen again. And this is our, you know, favorite formula, formula for rust protection and like anti-corrosion stuff. It works so well and it's black, so it's just gonna hide all of the rust here. All right, guys, that I think is officially a wrap on our entire suspension. As you can see, I've decided to go a little bit more uh, spray happy with the fluid film here in certain areas that this car has a little bit of that surface rust, so. And, um, you know, as you guys just witnessed, the, the amount of time and effort it does take to do an alignment is, God, we've been at this, what, like three hours, TP? Probably, yeah. It is, it is a long time, it certainly does. Uh, a lot of effort does go into it. And I mean, we could be taking it to an alignment shop, but by the time we take the car, drive it there and back, we find that this is the, the quicker way to do it. The fitment on uh, those Buddy Club wheels is pretty aggressive and this car does have a rather large lip in the rear here. So I am gonna do a tad bit of a fender roll. I'm a little worried though and we are done right there. That's it, no more fender rolling because there is Bondo. Oh no. <laughs> um, here, let's, let's raise this car up and I'll show you what I mean. There it is, that my good friends is the beginning of a Bondo crack. You can see they just used uh, Bondo on the outside here to smooth this in likely because it was pretty rusty. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do here. I don't really wanna try to roll more of it because I think we're just gonna end up with a bunch of cracks everywhere. You can see like it just, it's just folding it so badly. Oh man, you can, oh. Yeah, 
It's just well, you've started now, PT. The damage is done. I like it. Well, because what, I, what I'm thinking uh, I might do here is just come in and shave this back, That's rather than idea. try to like roll this because it's just going to continue to crack this. And if this this crack starts, it's going to go over here, and then it's going to ruin this paint job, which I really don't want to do. Did you guys see like every time I hit a bondo, a chunk of bondo it was a pfft, there's all this like white powder coming up. Um, and I thought that would be the best way to just give this lip a little less girth. And I didn't go all the way in for obvious reasons. Um, I didn't want to, you know, disturb the bondo, but I think this will be good enough. And hot off the delivery truck, a set of Hawk HP Pluses. Huge thanks to Markor for having these in stock and getting them over to us so quickly. And the HP Plus from Hawk, I find is a great dual purpose pad. It's good for the street. It's got great initial bite, but it's still, uh, you know, fade resistant on the track. Especially on so, a lightweight car like this. Exactly. And unfortunately, this was an ex unexpected cost for the first time in, I don't know, a long time. The stash has not come through. If you didn't watch the previous episode, do so and you'll find out. I, I thought I had a set of pads for this car, but I didn't. So. Fortunately, it's a bit of a hit on the budget, but it's going to be one of the most important ones, right? Brakes are huge, and they're certainly gonna cut the uh, lap times down. It's official. I think this entire front end on this car is not OE. The uh, fenders are not OE. I saw, this one is called, th this is a Tong Yang Fender. Tong Yang, okay. Tong Yang. Yeah. So uh, this- I went to high school with a name guy, Tong Yang. Oh yeah, yeah. right on. Um, this one here is also a Tong Yang. And as you saw, the front bumper is an aftermarket. I think it was a Kappa one, which yeah. I think is a, a good brand, made in the USA. I didn't notice that, so. And thank God we've got that rebar and the, the foam liner inside because this bumper, as you can see, is now gonna fit so much better. All right guys, this is pretty exciting. We are on to the body mods here and this is a tactical art style front lip which cost me a whopping $120 on eBay. So I wish I could afford the real one but in this scenario, that is definitely not the case. And really on a track car, you want a disposable lip because it is going to get trashed, but it's going to look so cool. 120 bucks, well spent. It looks amazing. And the fitment on it is really, really good. Like you can see the gap is so, so good, man. It like, I am not going to complain about anything. This is certainly a score. Uh, this fist sized hole here is a bit of a problem. For those of you joining us, this car was an all motor car, had a big intake scoop right here. Um, I was planning to find little pieces of, of plastic here and kind of like weld them in, but right now I'm, I don't know, I think that's gonna look cheesy as well, so I'm just gonna leave it for the time being. What I should do is like maybe find a squirrel or like a dead rat on the side of the street, just stuff it that's in there. Yeah. Because that would look pretty funny I'm rolling down, right? <laughs> Much of the same out back here. This is, I don't know, it's a maybe a Type R replica, some other type of cheap ABS plastic both on in the rear. And uh, I think it, it's gonna look pretty good. So we do have quite a problem here. When they designed this, they were probably looking at pea shooter exhaust systems. You can see the gritty exhaust tip is touching here. So I'm gonna have to come in here with a hell of a Dremel tool and uh, section this out correctly. With some double-sided tape, we do have a decent fit. <laughs> Uh, exhaust tip though is killing me because essentially at this point you can see I've cut out a groove here to kind of like let it breathe but we would need to move this exhaust tip outwards to kind of get a proper I get it I'm pretty sure Gret when Gretty uh, designed this exhaust system they didn't have this you know rear lip in mind so um, it's not terrible we'll see thank god it's just a bunch of double-sided tape if I don't like it I'm just gonna pull it off and what EK hatch build wouldn't be without a proper EK9 Civic Type R rear hatch spoiler. It's an OEM unit, picked up for 250 bucks, and oh, dude, 
250 bucks. It's, it's amazing. Blew the budget on that wing, but it is amazing. It, it is, it is. It, it just, it's gonna make the car. Like, look at this little thing in the back. No go. This, hell yeah. Man, this thing is looking so good. But before we give you all the beauties, I need to finish up a couple of minor things. And as you can see, with the Civic, there is a rubber gasket that runs right along this edge and it fills this gap that kind of right now looks unwanted. Um, this thing is also missing the windshield washer nozzles and the wipers. Uh, I am, I've already painted the wipers, but now I'm gonna pop off this exact, you can see little gasket here that goes around. Okay, wipers are in place. And of course, I am reusing the wiper blades. I'm not buying new ones, cause you know, you don't wanna ding the budget there. We've got the that liner in place along the front. And of course, look at that. Now that the, the front end is complete here, we needed it not working windshield washer nozzles. Because well, you know, on a car like this, really, when do I, Am I gonna need to be spraying the fluid? Never. Come Never. On. Just want to plug those holes. I'll just have like a water bottle. I'll pour it out the, the yeah. side of the window. You Rain know, when you're driving, you're going like this. So. Surround the coat. The yeah. There you go. We got options. Yeah, yeah. We're all good. But man, it looks so much more complete now. Before we get into the interior work, I went into the stash, pulled some stuff out because we are going to need to utilize it to make sure that this car is prepped and ready for the track from an interior standpoint. First of all, steering wheel. This thing does not have a steering wheel. It essentially came just with a stock one. Uh, I went upstairs and pulled out the steering wheels that I think I've got that I can kind of use here. Um, this is an, I think this one came off the red Supra, this OMP one. I don't necessarily love it. I don't love the flat bottom. It, chrome on the bottom. Yeah, there, the chrome's yeah. not very cool. Uh, this one I think also came off of the black Supra. I think? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. But I'm certainly leaning towards this guy for uh, for the steering wheels. Uh, and as a, a seat, I am going with this Sparco, which... Came out of the 350Z. Yes, yes. This is originally a 350Z car. Uh, out of that car, uh, man, it's been kicking around a long time. It's expired, but it's going to be okay for the track. Uh, I bought a Sparco bracket that I thought was going to work uh, with this seat and man, I expect better from Sparco because this is off. The holes don't line up. Yeah, and you gotta bolt these brackets on. So there's no provision for a seat belt, which also really sucks. I don't know, I'm gonna have to make this work. We're gonna have to cut it up, do some welding. So I'm sure we can get that done. Um, lastly, big thanks to Clayton Harmer who heard my call out. I was like, oh, I love that SIR cluster. It is so, so great. And uh, he sent me this. It is a little scratched up here. So I've pulled another old cluster that we have here with the proper plastic screen that I can replace and, and fix up and make, like new, make it look like new again. So too much talking. It is now time we actually get down to some work. And just like that, we have come to a screeching halt with what is uh, a bit of an issue. 
I didn't even think about this. Um, bolting this Sparco seat directly to the rail actually does wonders for lowering the seat position. But as you can see, it's so tilted forward, so much tilted forward. Really, this seat should be back like this to kind of give you a proper seating position, but it's like straight up. You can see if I get in here right now, I'm low, which is nice, but man, like it just feels it's like I'm sitting upright, so upright, like which- Leaning forward almost. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world. I, I mean, my hands, I just feel like I'm, I'm way too You're close here. Like, close, look at, yeah. uh, just to be able to operate this, I would want the seat way further back. Like I would want the seat probably around here. That would be way, way better there and tilted like that. Um, but that's not necessarily gonna happen. And you can see we would have to get sliders to make this work, which would raise the seat, which again, not a terrible thing, but sliders, I don't even know if they're available for a seat this old. They're also not in my budget. I did not budget for that. So I'm gonna do what uh, most people would do in this type of situation. You go back to stock seats. Of course, that's what you do because when you have an aftermarket part that doesn't fit, stock always works and here we are. You know what? I I'm not that disappointed about it. There's a, a little bit of bolstering, okay? These are, these are cloth seats. So it's not like I'm gonna really be slipping and sliding on leather seats. Uh, the ride height is a little bit higher, but everything just feels right. So, and it's awesome for the budget because it came out of the parts car. Last piece of electronics just arrived and that is our Link Can Lambda wideband sensor. This is essential if you have a standalone ECU. And of course, I've already put the wideband sensor into the exhaust system at that K-tuned header. This now plugs into here. They have now come out with this uh, cable here, which now is a direct plug and play. So this plugs right into the wideband here and then plugs into my CAN one right here. So essentially making this completely plug and play. Oops, got that the wrong way. Bam, done. So now we've got wideband set up. We are ready to tune this thing, which is gonna be happening in a future episode. One last thing to do, no disrespect towards K-tuned here, but we do need to remove this massive decal. Yeah. And I just, I don't get it. Like why would somebody want this so low, like this could have been up here, but giveaway they placed car. it. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I've seen photos of this car in giveaway condition. Yeah. There was another banner above this uh, banner. Okay. So that's why the K-Tune one is so low. I guess when you're ripping on the drag strip, it's not a huge deal. No. Having a decal that's essentially in your line of sight. Dude, you've seen drifters with like full windshield deck Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, thing, just, so. they're just way more competent drivers than me because Clearly. I just, this was a little bit too much for me. Well, I'm speechless. I really don't know what to say. This car to me could not have turned out any better. The combination of the white buddy club wheels with the Continental Extreme Contact Forces. They just look so aggressive and so proper and right on this chassis. That front lip, that rear lip, like the CTR 
Rear spoiler, I just, I, I can't get enough, man. Like this thing looks incredible. And DP, uh, should I say this? Am I, I'm gonna be bold and say that this could be one of the cleanest K-series engine bays that we have ever built. Yeah, it like, is clean. When, when you look at this, remember that this was such a, like a crusty, disgusting motor. And wow, everything's just, it looks so, so proper. I am so pumped to go rip this thing, but first we do need to go to the dyno. But before that, I do have some disturbing news to tell you. This is what I want to show you guys. Do you see this? You guys see this? This trail of fluid looks like fresh brake fluid. That's right, people brake fluid on the ground in the middle of the car. When I looked underneath, I was like, oh, this cannot be good. This is smack dab in the middle of the vehicle uh, um, over to the left driver's side, which can only mean one thing. And just as I feared, we have a rusty brake line that has broken and is now leaking, which is the worst thing because we don't know if like the entire line is crusty. I'm just hoping it's a section, but it's, if it's the whole line, you, you gotta drop the tank, which just, it's bad news. Things are happening here. You can see the bolt buster is amazing. The only downside to it is you can see the amount of smoke and byproduct it produces. It's probably not good for the lungs, but uh, in this case here, we've got to make do. Oh, look at that. And I would like a go. <laughs> so we're gonna do this, uh, I think like four more times here and we'll have this plastic off. Wow, so you can see this line is fully cooked. Look at it there, DP. Yeah, oh, look, nice. there, there it's coming. See, I bend it? Yeah. There it is, that's it. Wow. Now, in a normal situation like this, what I would do is I would replace all the lines running front to back. You'd drop the gas tank and we'd be good to go. We have a dyno session in two days. So I essentially have one day to fix this, which means I'm gonna cut out the rusty portion of this line and just replace it and patch it. That's kind of what we're gonna have to do here. Quick update, as you can see, I have flared this side. It is in place here. But man, this is a job that uh, I think I said in a previous video, I loathe doing uh, this specifically now. I don't want to have to completely drain the master, so we'd have to re-bleed the brake. So I'm trying to do this as I go here. Now, as soon as I, you can see, I take that out. We've got a hell of a leak here. And my, I need to double flare this. Oh, okay, that is in. So this is actually a, a pretty neat tool. I put that in my pocket, of course. So to try to get this to be squared, this double flare tool, what I do is you screw this on here and then uh, break fluid leaking everywhere. This yeah, is not a- it's good for the skin. Yeah. Good well, for your contact dermatitis. Yeah, yeah, you see that goes on there. So you crank this all the way down here. Beautiful work here. You can see this is just wonderful, yeah, wonderful yeah, work. Yeah. Cross your fingers for me here. Let's see, did this flare. Man, I can't tell because it's running out, but yeah. it doesn't look like it did. Doesn't I think look like it, it did anything. No, nah, it, 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 it didn't get to the bottom. Huh. All right, well, I'm gonna, anyways, I'm just gonna keep doing this. We're gonna save you the agony here. So I do have to flare this and then we should be able to put the lines together. Like the middle line, building this line is gonna be pretty easy. It's just this right now is a freaking disaster. I don't know what else to say here other than I, I pray to the VTAC gods that this line doesn't leak. You can see it's fixed with the two links in it. But oh, look, at, look at my hands, look at the floor here. It's just working with brake fluid and you know, trying to patch this kind of stuff. Like rust, I hate rust, God. Mark my words, from here on out, every chassis that I buy is gonna be rust free. That's a rust bold free, statement, people. Bold rust free, statement. they're all coming from BC, anywhere that is in a salt belt, because 
I just, I can't stand this stuff, man. Even this when is... a fully painted rolling chassis falls in your lap see, for $2,000, I don't that's know, That's what I mean, man. and I thought when I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's all great, but you can't see underneath here. I didn't yep. look closely enough, and sure enough, man. The one like, thing. Look at this, look at this line. We, I didn't even touch it, it's just, it broke. Yes. It broke itself, look at that. Pathetic, that okay. is the definition of rust belt cars right here. And it's just, like, why in this certain area here, the whole line, this is like, look over here, the line is fine. Yeah, it's, it's weird. all good here, but just over here, just ended up rotting oh, out. Yeah. So, that sucks, this is fixed. We now have to bleed all the brakes again, and then, then I will come back with the zen of being happy, and I'll look at the exterior of this car and feel better again. Well, Rust, it's the gift that keeps on giving, and by giving, I mean screwing me over here. We are literally a day away from the dyno, and this is the kind of stuff that happens. We were just checking the power steering, and sure enough, we've got a massive crack in this hard line here. You can see it dripping right there, people. Right there, look at that. Thank you, hard line. Remember when I replaced this one? Foolishly, I should have looked closer. I bet you as soon as I moved this or bent it a little bit, it has severed it. And when I fixed that original line, of course it was easy to do because there was no engine in the bay. Now this would be so much trickier. I don't even want to mess with this right now because we're so close. Like I literally have, you know, four hours before we got to go home and we've got the weekend and then we got to go to the dyno. So what I'm going to do right now is remove the power steering, which sucks, but it's not the end of the world. And then I'm going to take the belt off and we're going to run this without any power steering. And then we will revisit this in the future. But for now, that's going to be the ghetto fix to get this car ready and prepped for the dyno. All right, so fingers crossed. We've, you know, we've run into a couple of issues and this is what always happens right before you, you know, you've got a deadline for something. I have to give a massive shout out to Forrest over at Link ECU, who I jumped onto a team viewer and just dialed me in real quick. So this thing is drivable. And man, let me fire this up for you guys because it purrs like a kitten. Oh, look at this thing. That sound good. It's so good. It is so, so good. Look at this. I just, yes, man. Yes, finally. All the hard work has come together. This thing looks good, it runs amazing. So I'm gonna jump in here. Uh, this car is not plated, so I'm just gonna take it for a quick little street rip here just to make sure the, the brakes and everything work. And then, uh, and then that's it. So I'm gonna jump in here. Oh, I guess I gotta close the hood, but let's, let's just see. Let's see how close the hood. <laughs> that's right, everybody, it's a moose sighting. Hey. Oh, you know what? The, the like non-power steering, the, the non-power steering is not bad. No? No. It's, it's all not right. all that bad. Well, now you don't, can't use that as an excuse when I uh, beat you at the racetrack. Right? This is how you drive the car, right? <laughs> like pop some tech on the street here for us? Well, this is untuned, DP. Oh. Come on, you want me to pull my motor up right now? No. This is purely an analog experience. We have no power steering, no boosted brakes. Like this is the definition of, you know, an analog car. The, the brakes do need to be bedded in, I can tell a little bit, but man, they're not bad at all. Like I was worried they're gonna be super, super hard to, to push to stop, but it's not, the effort is definitely higher, but it's not as bad. And you know, we'll find out on the street or on the racetrack, but dude, so, so good, so good. It sounds good too. It's it not like super good. drony. So. No, it's not too loud. I'm gonna make another pass here again, just right. because. Okay, don't get hit by this coach truck. Well, 
Well guys, that is gonna be a wrap on this episode. Post in the comments, are you guys as happy as me as to how this car turned out? Because I am just ecstatic. I couldn't have asked for a better turnout. You know, the last, a couple of last hit moment hiccups here, but this thing is ready for the dyno. And that is what you will see in the next episode. This thing is gonna get tuned. We're gonna give you a finale, a total of all the, the money spent. And we're also gonna put Dave's ITR on the dyno as well to see what kind of numbers it makes, because why not? So thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.